What's going on, everyone? So Sidney Prescott and very likely Gail Weathers uh, both should be returning to the upcoming Scream 7. Uh, Sydney is already confirmed. Nev Campbell is on board. Uh, Courtney Cox, uh, she is in discussions based on recent reports uh, to come aboard. Makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, she is one of the people that signed up immediately uh, for Scream 5 and 6. Uh, now that Nev is back, I imagine that Courtney will follow suit, and then they're going to figure out and tell a story centered around these two. Now, there is going to be a new cast that is involved. There's going to be new characters that are added, and depending on who those characters, the direction in which they go, um, you know, there's a million ways in which they could approach this, right? They This film is supposed to be kind of like a half-and-half half film. It's supposed to be intertwined and mingled. Again, we're going off of just rumors here, but... Uh, Half of it is supposed to be kind of Sydney focused and centric. The other half is supposed to introduce these new characters, kind of build those new characters. I would imagine that they don't want to stop here at Scream 7 because, again, they paid a ton of money to acquire the rights to Scream uh, and a several film catalog, but mostly Scream is like the big prize. So they need to pump out as many of these movies as possible uh, and have as much success as possible with Nev, Courtney returning hopefully that'll happen. But there's also a lot of speculation and a lot of discussion and a lot of rumors about like who else is going to be involved, right? Kevin Williamson uh, is going to be at the helm as the director. You would imagine that he's going to have his fingerprints all over this film, uh, maybe even helping in the writer room, uh, maybe even helping with the direction in the vision. Uh, you know, Kirby Reed is somebody that people have thrown out, maybe some old characters from the past. And then on top of that, you add in just previous stories that he had in mind and visioned uh, for this film. And the big thing is, like, who's going to be the big bad, right? How are they going to approach this film? How are they going to make this the biggest draw possible? How are they going to lead uh, this film into a way that will, again, kind of bring everything full circle, but also provide a, a bunch of box office success? Well, it's uh, kind of my biggest nightmare, right? Uh, it's something that I was hoping they wouldn't do, but it looks like this is going to be the case, and Stu Mocker is returning to Scream. Um, Matthew Lillard has signed on, or is in talks to sign on. Um, I imagine they see it through. I imagine he comes on board. He's not going to be playing any other character, right? Um, now, could this potentially just be like a flashback scene? Could this potentially be some type of just quick brief, like, oh, you know, here you go. Here's a quick little moment, quick little glance. Uh, there, there's talks about uh, Leslie Mocker potentially being in this film. Do they use Matthew Lillard as like this sort of flashback or or some sequence to kind of tie in and maybe she, or maybe she's seeing ghosts of, uh, of Matthew Lillard. This doesn't mean inherently Matthew Lillard uh, will be playing a huge significant role in this film, but uh, it looks like he's coming on board. Now, I know many Stu fans are going to be excited. I know many Stu fans are going to rally behind this and really uh, be excited for just how they're going to approach this. I know many people really want to see uh, Stu in this film, even in some capacity, uh, craving something scary. You know, many of you are familiar with uh, with Steven, and he's gonna, <laughs> he's probably jumping for joy right now. Um, I'm sure he's already made a video or is gonna make a video about it. We'll see. Time will tell. Uh, but I mean, look, it's about the execution for me, right? My problem is like, how do you tell a convincing story? of like where he's been after all this time. Now, could this be something where, you know, maybe this picks up, I've thrown out the idea of maybe this movie picking up after like a Scream 3, right? So that way there's not as much time in between. I mean, there's still like the time gap, but like there's not as many like other characters and like how come no one's mentioned Stu Mocker, uh, right? Like it's just kind of like, oh, well, Stu was locked away. Here's his release. It's one approach. It's one way that they could go about it. Um, uh, the the one thing that kind of okay, sure, is like one. I've talked about this before. Like my problem is that they bring back Stu. You have so much that you need to dive into. So much you need to explain. So much you need to unfold and unpack. But if this movie 
with Sydney, with Gail, and whatever the new characters are, if you kind of make this film centered around that, you kind of make this film centered around Stu Mocker and kind of telling the story and where he's been and kind of catch everyone up to speed, then I think that you can make this work. Then I think you could potentially get away with a, a Stu Mocker level story and really kind of drive it home because, you know, like, let's say Scream 7 with the core four and everything like that were still intact. The the concern and the issue is, is like, how do you tell a story with Sydney, Gail, you know, if you bring back Kirby, Kirby, the core four, plus whatever new characters you introduce, plus, you know, the uh, overlaying story, plus Ghostface, it's just, it gets so convoluted and there's so many different things that you have to address and unpack or, or you just completely, you know, uh, just kind of brush over and then it just doesn't make a lot of sense and then you just kind of get in this wave of just... It's like, all right, like you're trying to do too much in a film. But with the core four and and their departure, uh, not getting into that, but, you know, um, with that, and now you introduce some new characters, if you kind of just highlight, you know, a handful of characters, or maybe they even tie into the Stu Mocker story, kind of center this around Stu, you center this around uh, Sydney and, and Gail, Maybe Stu's working with Leslie Mocker. Maybe she's had him in hiding, right, or something like that. Uh, maybe you have some type of connection with that, and you kind of lay. Because also, do you want the the big reveal? And I know some people are going to look at it and go like, "Why would they announce this? Why would they release it? Why wouldn't they, you know, have it be a, a shock?" Well, one, how many like us diehards? We're looking into you know the all the different, the bloody disgusting reports and stuff like that. But the casual fan, the normal audience, like the, the people that aren't scream obsessed like us, they're not really looking this stuff up. They're not really diving into it heavily. So it would be a surprise. It would be a shock to many people. Also, the other side you could look at it is like Matthew Lillard is beloved and his character Stu is beloved even by casual fans, right? So why not use him as a marketing tool? Why not use him as a marketing ploy along with Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott? Kind of draw that audience, right? And now you, you kind of have both of these characters in the forefront of the marketing. So I don't think that the announcement is something that would necessarily cause some, some stir cause problems or like hinder a reveal. Again, it's all about the execution. Plus, I think if you're already aware and you know, then it makes it easier to get him established and it makes it easier to get him across. I just think that that's the best approach. Um, I also think that this is just April Fool's and I just made this whole video up and, you know, it was none of that is true. None of that is happening. And I still hope Stu Mocker isn't in this movie and maybe this, maybe this film or maybe this video ages like milk and maybe we do get uh, maybe I just spoke it into existence but nonetheless uh, again had to, had to get a little a little gag in there uh, for everybody I had to kind of you know make a little fun video uh, for those that made it to the end don't spoil it if you made it to the end don't spoil it don't ruin it for people um, you know just throw down in the comments or something uh, uh, Stu returned or something or Stu lives or whatever um, so that way I know who like one who made it to the end of the video and, and got the gag and two, uh, so that way, you know, you kind of push the narrative of, of the stew thing, you know, share this with some people, get a good laugh, all that stuff. But I appreciate you guys. Seriously. Thank you so much. And yeah, hopefully, uh, we continue to get news and build and Hey, look, if stew does return, then we'll definitely talk about it for real. Uh, you know, if, if <laughs> you see another stew video of him returning, no, that one's not an April Fool's joke. No, that that one's he's returned. So we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Past question. You let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Um, you know, would you want Stu to return? Do you like the idea of Stu returning? Are you like me where you're like, ah, not really. Again, I, I don't hate it. I just, for me, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I'd rather just, let's go a new direction. Let's, let, let's tell a new story. But if you were ever going to do it, I think now's the time to do it personally. Um, but let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. It's going to enjoy these types of videos. I truly appreciate it. Now subscribe to the channel. What are you doing? 
hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.